Are these the best guote in Chinatown? This is the strongest and most similar to Asia durian flavored ice cream I've ever had in the United States of America. So it'll be Ming Wong versus Big Wong. Oh, Ming Wong versus Big Wong? Yo, we gotta get the wieners. Here it is. <laughs> hey, yo. Hey, yo. Yo, we're eating mala ton from Heilong Zhang in Chinatown. I just feel like this is the end of the series. Like, we don't need to do anymore because this is it. This is the apex. This is the pinnacle. Could this episode 14 be our last one? We've covered almost 200 spots in Chinatown alone, but you know what? Chinatown is constantly evolving. And in this installment, we got Build Your Own Dry Pot, The Battle of the Wongs, a Taiwanese Guotea Master, Lobster Burgers, and maybe, just maybe, I finally get that mushroom chicken dish I was looking for all along. Help us out, hit that like button, share this video, and use this series as an ongoing guide to Chinatown. Let's go. Hey, what's going on guys? I wanna give a huge shout out to our sponsor, Helix. Everybody's looking for their queen in their life. Mine just happened to be a Helix mattress. You've probably heard us talk about them before on this channel because they are making sure I get a good night's sleep and they're giving you up to $200 off any purchase and two free pillows by clicking on this link below. If you don't know, they are a premium mattress in a box company that fits your unique needs with the right mattress. I took the sleep quiz that they have on their website and they asked me a few questions about whether I'm a side or a back sleep if I often wake up with back aches and they ended up matching me up with the queen size Don Lux. It's their firm 14 inch mattress with hybrid foam spring cushioning, six layers of comfort and extra lumbar support. You know I'm a big guy so I need it. Ordering was super easy and it came straight to my door. Delivery was free and they threw in two fluffy and soft pillows. One of the coolest things they do to show you how legit they are is give you a 100 night sleep trial so you can test it out and decide to return the mattress if you don't like it. Sleep 100 nights on this bed before you make your final decision. Helix also offers a 10 year warranty, financing options and flexible payment plans if you need as well. Okay, now let me get back to you in a month to update you on how I'm sleeping. If you're looking to get better sleep, you can click on helix.com slash fungrose and take the sleep quiz. Get matched with the right mattress, buy it for $200 off, and still get to try it for 100 nights. You can't lose. I can feel it with the Helix. Back to the video. All right, you guys, we're at Sammy Wago. This is actually a Taiwanese board here chain from Taiwan. They actually have a stall here, and um, yeah, they have different flavors. They have the Zhao Pai, which is the special. They have the China Boy, which is the Jiu Tai. Which one should I choose? Which one should I choose? The Zhao Pai. The Zhao Pai is the best. Okay, we're only going to get Guo Tia. He was saying, you know, the boiled ones are cool, but really what we specialize is the pan fried. 28 years of mastery of the Taiwanese Guo Tia here at the Ma Street Eatery. Hey. Yeah. Yeah. This is the OG right here. Huh? Wow, you got the different colors of Guotier. All right, you guys, $44 worth of Guotier from Taiwan. Famous Sufu, he's been making it for 30 years. Let's check it out. Honestly, it does taste like Taiwan. Like, I wanna, I don't wanna say like 10 out of 10, but I would say eight out of 10 match. Swapping in for David, I have the honors of trying the pork and chive Guotier. Pork and chive, probably one of my favorite dumpling flavors. That's actually a little bit like a chive pancake filling. Do you guys know the Jiu Tai Hezi? I think it's cool that a Taiwanese Guo Tia master has joined Ma Street Eatery, which is mostly Cantonese food because Cantonese don't always focus on Guo Tia. They more focus on maybe one ton or like dim sum, you know, steamed dumplings. Guys, the Guo Tia masters over there, I say check it out. These might be the best Guo Tia in Chinatown. After trying all the flavors here, I gotta say my favorite are the chive ones that taste like a Jiu Tai Hezi and the pork and shrimp ones. Of course, next up on Chinatown Chief Eats, a new spot at the Ma Eatery is a chain from Hong Kong. And this is Dao Fu Hong Kong Sick Wow. Hi, how you Right here we got some very traditional Hong Kong street snacks from a place called Yan Ho, which means like of the people, for the people. Cool name, especially, you know, right now. Uh, so here we have some grilled eggplant. We have some fish stuffed jalapenos and peppers here. Some tofu with uh, a little fish cake grilled on top. Kind of fried mochi dessert. Let's check this out. This is a fried outer sweet potato. It looks like an empanada or some type of curry puff. Let's try this real quick. That's savory. Wow. Right off the bat, the mochi potato outer feels a little bit more like from the Chiu Jiao influence. And I can tell the ingredients. This is actually a food I've never had before. It almost gives you the flavor of kind of like a salted egg yolk 
So I would say that I could see really old people really enjoying this. Before there was curry fish balls on the streets of Hong Kong, you had these traditional snacks. They were grilled here. This is a tofu cube with a little bit of a, a fried fish cake on top. This one here, guys, is one of my more favorite dim sum dishes. It is a pepper stuffed with fish cake. Wow, that was good. Long pepper, more of your jalapeno style. One of my favorite fried eggplant with uh, fish cake inside. Mmm. As I'm here looking at the tofu fa and the fish paste and the peppers and this traditional treat right here, which I forgot the name. You know, there was a history before the curry fish balls or before popcorn chicken at boba shops. You know, these were the snacks on the streets of Hong Kong or at your little cafes. And you can see some of these dishes incorporated into the larger dim sum narrative and cuisine, of course. But yeah. There's not gonna be a lot of businesses that are solely dedicated to this. So that's what I think is cool about Mott Street Eatery is that a stall can exist just serving some specific old school Hong Kong snacks. Now, I totally get it if you like the mango, mango, palmelo, sago, yogurt, milk cream desserts with the brown sugar. I get it, but you gotta try these. And I think food halls like this make it really easy for you to try traditional treats that may not be able to exist as a big restaurant on their own. So shout out to Mott Street Eatery, Chinatown Cheap Eats, let's keep it going. All right, Marco, we are here at uh, Zhang Liang. This is a mala tang spot. It's actually a chain from China. Okay. And they said they uh, literally just opened a few weeks ago. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and grab our like mala tang items and they're gonna put it into this like dry pot, stew it up. So we're eating mala tang from Heilong Zhang in Chinatown. All right, you guys, we are here at Zhang Liang. We're about to just make one dry pot. Marco, here's your tongs. Hey. I thought this was a wine cooler at first. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, by the way, uh, do not get mad at us. They lifted the mask mandate, so yeah, we don't got COVID, so. We're good. Yeah. We're gonna get a little lobster balls. We'll take two. How you doing? <laughs> what else should we get? Should we go with a spam one? ham. Yeah, two pieces of spam. Spam goes really well in these uh, gang guo, like spicy yeah, mala so tongs. Two so eggs and spam, let's get it. Yo, we gotta get the wieners. Here it is. <laughs> yeah, hey, yo. Hey, yo. All right, you guys, this is a gang guo. Shangguo. Um, so this was a dry pot. I couldn't do the soup. You know, after the last time we did Sichuan food, Ooh. my uh, bowel movements, you know, have, yeah. were impacted. Let's just say that me and the bathroom were best friends. Oh man, this is your vermicelli right here, bro. Oh, that's it. Hey. I never had vermicelli at this color due to all the spices they put in there. Because usually in the Vietnamese spots, they're just a solid white. And uh, this is the most Chinese spot that Marco has ever been to in his entire life. Yes, yeah, usually uh, I'm usually going like Wa Fong, Big Wong, Small Wong. Okay. This is much more uh, like the designs that you see in China in malls and strip malls. And, and even like in that. Flushing by like Northern Boulevard, you come to a lot of these authentic spots, which in Chinatown here in New York City, you really, you really don't find that. Man, Andrew, this is from Dongbei, Heilongjiang. Uh, so let's check it out. Even though they're cooking Sichuan food, they changed from Heilongjiang. So this whole thing, guys, was um, wow. not super cheap. It was about 30 bucks, yeah, but uh, you could probably feed four people. Feed four people, maybe it's good for a little date night, maybe, you know? I think more vermicelli needs to have spice on it. Dude, I'm telling you, my favorite type of la is not ma la, it's shang la. I mean, this is a very family style dish, yeah. and I like it for picky eaters because they can just get a lot of what they like and nothing they don't like. Yeah, so just say if you like the spam ham and I don't like it, you can put it on your side, if you know, and I can grab the, the, the calamari. All right, you guys. Uh, Zhang Liang Ma La Tang from Heilong Zhang is something I've never seen before in Chinatown. Definitely way more of a flushing thing, but more and more of these chains are gonna come in. Like we said, you don't have to get that much food, so it totally could be a cheap eat. For lunch, you probably could eat for like 10 bucks. Marco, sometimes in the restaurant world, there's like a dialogue and a narrative and all these stories and dramas that us as regular consumers are not aware of, right? But what, what did we hear about this spot in, in the next spot? I heard that there's another spot down the block. The manager left, he went to this place, he opened up this place. So it's not just Little Italy with his drama. They brought it across the bridge to Chinatown too. Right, right, right. <laughs> I guess we'll just order like maybe a one ton uh, duck noodle here. We'll order a one ton duck noodle at Big Wong. So it'll be Ming Wong versus Big Wong. Oh, Ming Wong versus Big Wong? <laughs> Who is the bigger Wong? This is thirteen dollars. You could talk. fully loaded one ton mean here at Ming Wong. Ooh. Wow! They yeah. serve that with class, with the clay pot to go. Wow! With the little sprinkled scallions on top. Love we that. We gotta see if Big Wong does it just as nice. Wow! Look at oh. that. There's no fat on there. A lot of meat. The oh, brainy wait. one ton. We got the brainy wonton right here. Look at that. Okay. 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 Legend has it that was Albert Einstein's brain. He just ate. Yeah. 
Mmm, I like that. A lot of these old school Chinese spots in Chinatown, they have a lot of this old school style of cooking and the way it tastes is very different from these new spots. By the way, guys, this is not meant to be ultra competitive. We are supporting both Big Wong and Ming Wong. You know, regardless of how the owners feel about it, we're here for the eats. We're here to support Chinatown. Also, it is fun to lean into the drama a little bit. I oh, mean, it's hilarious. Listen, you know what? We, we all love, we oh. all love this spill the tea. Okay, so right off the bat, comparing the cashews, I can see that this one's a little bit more roasted, a little bit more burnt on the edges. This Darker. side at the Ming Wong is not as dark. It looks a little faded, it's not gonna so, lie. So I don't know which one's better, David. You guys gotta try it, but uh, so far, Big Wong aesthetically looks better. The, the barbecue pork battle between the OG and, you know, the new, the new guy, I don't know, copycat, whatever you wanna call it. Well, the OG one, the OG restaurant, their roast pork sticks together. So this is gonna be a good battle. I gotta go with that one. Yeah. Big one. Yeah. Got way, way more flavors in there. No, you're right. The yeah. big Wong Cha Shield flavor wise killed it. I'd say cut wise, I think it's more debatable. All right, you guys, onto the duck comparison between the OG and the uh, newcomer. Again, I would say uh, aesthetically, this one looks a little bit more roasted, possibly more flavor on the outside, a more shriveled skin. This one looks very clean though. Right. I think again, the flavor at Big Wong might have been better, but I like the cut of the duck better from Ming, Ming Wong. Ming Wong, I agree with you 100%. I actually overall like the duck from Ming Wong better. I agree. Yeah. All right, you guys, you could say the tiebreaker needs to be, you know, the noodles, the broth, the one ton, but we don't have all time. You know, we don't have all day to analyze this, guys. It's going down with the one tons. All right, you guys, it's been a tie so far, 1-1. One, one. We're letting the one tons be the decider. You know what? I had both, but I have to go with... I have to go with one more from uh, from Ming Wong. The winner between the Wongs on my street is three, two, one, go! M Ming Wong. For me, I gotta go Dai Wong. Sorry. Hey, you know what? I think that it was so close. Both spots have their own merits. I would say Ming Wong maybe tastes a little bit more HK Asia style, and Dai Wong, of course, Big Wong, you know, has the OG Chinatown flavors. Yeah, and that's what I love about it because I love that old school comfort food style when I used to be a kid going in there and eating it, and it just. The flavors are there and it just never disappoints. I really think it comes down to preference, guys. Come check it out. Do the Battle of the Wongs yourself. Cheap Chinatown eats $13.50 for both. This is with extra add-ons. Uh, even the $10 version would get you full. All right, we're in the back of Burger and Pizza. I'm here with Chef Josh. Josh, what do we got going on? Right here, we got the lobster burgers that's going to go with the house burger. The house burger is with the Angus beef burger and the lobster burger both combined. All right, you guys, we're with Josh from Burger Quan. Tell me about the lobster burger because this is something that's kind of like i never seen before. The guy, Juan, he wanted to do something with lobster, make lobster burgers. We decided to do our own thing. So we brought some of the hotel style. We did beef burgers, the latest beef burgers. So we bring the same quality of beef here. That one spot, steak and lobster, a flat iron, but like in a burger. Yes. All right, you guys, this is $18 at Burger Quan at Mod Street Eatery, but you get a lot. I mean, lobster is not cheap. So 18 bucks is actually still a Chinatown cheap eat. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> that's good. Guys, you guys have had surf and turf, that steak and a lobster tail. This is like surf and turf and a burger. This is the Burger Quan house special. You got lobster, you got Angus beef on the same burger. Surf and turf, it's crazy. That potato bun, real buttery soft, cheesy lobster on top are the Angus beef, man. Guys, you're not gonna find this burger at a lot of places out there, so they got it right here at Mott Street Eatery. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got the durian ice cream coming in at $8. Boom, this is made in-house. I believe Zunping was a uh, Chinese general that sailed like all around the world, and uh, I believe that's the name of the cafe. Don't quote me on it. That's just what I'm inferring. Dude, if this was a little bit warmer, I could like cut through it a little bit more. I'm telling you, the durian flavored ice cream at Dumping Cafe is mucho durian. The durian flavor is five out of five. In fact, this is the strongest and most similar to Asia durian flavored ice cream I've ever had in the United States of America, Dumping Cafe. Of course, Chinatown Cheap Eats, you gotta stop by the cheapest omakase stall in Manhattan, Domo Sushi. This is omakase level So Look at the mastery of it. Wow. I'm here at Domo Sushi and I have the Japanese Siamage, okay? $10 a piece, but omakase level. 
I know it's kind of weird to be here, but trust me, this stuff is good. Wow. Soft, a little citrusy, a little salty from the shoyu, banging. Bluefin toro. Bluefin toro with a caviar. Bluefin tuna with caviar and gold flakes on top. Guys, let's try to join with the gold flake on there. So boy. All right, you guys, I cook, like we said, they're sort of pushing this technology where it allows you to saute things by robot. This is the uh, General Sow's chicken. Does it taste any better than other General Sow's chicken? Straight up, this General Sow's chicken, low, middle, high, is probably more towards the high end. This is pretty good. I personally never come to Chinatown to get orange chicken or uh, General Sow's or sweet and sour pork, but I don't blame you if you do. All right, I've made it to 54 Bayer Market, and guess what? I think they have it. It's called steamed rice with pork ribs, but I'm pretty sure that's a mislabel, and that's actually the Bakukai mushroom chicken. Wow, everything looks mad good right now. Super hot. Chinatown Cheap Eats 14. Do I finally get it after all this time? Oh, Bakukai. Yeah, yako. Yako. Okay. Just to show you what they got at the Bayer Market, they have all these marinated fishes and actually they have the chicken thigh with shiitake right here. And that's basically this right here. Chicken thigh with shiitake. Chicken thigh with shiitake. They giving you the mix. You don't have to do anything. It's a very triumphant victory. Finally, it's been a long time coming. 12 episodes in, I finally got it. Now I know it says mushroom and pork ribs. It's actually chicken thigh, guys. We have chicken thigh and the shiitake mushrooms. We got it for $4. I finally, this was the most elusive dish. It always sold out. They only got like two or three of them. Um, but I'm just so excited that we finally get to try it. Now, do I really think that it's gonna live up to the actual expectations or gonna, is, is it gonna really be that great? I don't know. It's probably gonna taste exactly like how I think it is. All right, guys, let's see what I got. I'm just gonna eat it right here because you know what it is. I can't wait. Oh, look at that. Is this what you want? Is this what you want? Mmm. Honestly, it's pretty good. Wow. Wow. I'm not even gonna lie. This is probably the best cheap chicken and mushroom dish in Chinatown. That's why it always sells out. This is good. The chicken thigh is tender. The mushroom flavor is coming through. Got a little vermicelli up in there. Got some rice, got some cabbage, got the whole shebang, got the whole package, guys. $4 Chinatown Cheap Eats. Finally got it. It's 10 a.m. Bakukai chicken mushroom. Ooh. It's just so crazy to be here right now. I just feel like this is the end of the series. Like, we don't need to do anymore because this is it. This is the apex. This is the pinnacle. This is a peak. Can't get much higher than this. All right, our next spot on Chinatown Cheap Eats is Core Coffee. I think it stands for Korean because it is also Korean owned and it's a really cool hip spot that just opened across from the police station right here. Looks really cool inside, let's check it out. I mean, aesthetically, this spot really stands out. It has like white brick, it has like and, uh, cool black and white photos of like some really cool street art. All right, guys, I think this is the most aesthetically focused cafe in Chinatown for sure. And I'm sure the quality is good too. Let me try this because uh, right here we have the matcha tiramisu latte. So I've never even had a matcha tiramisu latte. I've had a tiramisu latte and a matcha latte, but never the blend. Yo, that is hella good. Wow. I'm gonna have to give that a, a five out of five on the matcha latte. It's, it's very creamy though. Okay, here's the black sesame latte. Well, it's really good. That actually tastes exactly like the Chinese dessert, the Tang Yuan, because it has like the black sesame inside and a little bit of cream. A very trendy item here at Korean cafes all over is the croffle. It's essentially a croissant, but it's pressed in the shape of a waffle. So it's gonna have some flakiness, but it's gonna have the shape of a, of a waffle. I mean, look how they made the matcha one. They put the matcha cream and then they dusted it with matcha powder. We got a savory quaffle. It has Gouda cheese, bacon on it. I've never had this before. This is looking like a meal. That's my favorite one. Now, first of all, all this stuff tastes very, very good, super high quality, but you can just look at it and tell that this is bringing something that, you know, Chinatown didn't have before. 
All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we've got Jisoo Vegetarian Restaurant. Su in the Jisoo stands for Su Tai, which means vegetarian cuisine. You guys, we are looking at some vegan chicken, vegan pork. Oh no, I'm sorry, this is vegan chashu. This is the vegan chicken. We've got Japanese kombucha pumpkin. We've got some potatoes. Of course, we've got this uh, seven grain multi-mixed rice. I've got a soup right here that is normally made with a lot of like abalones and pork. But this is uh, of course vegetarian, being that we're at the Buddhist Taoist spot. And these are vegan uh, meatballs. In a lot of vegan restaurants in terms of Western food, they are more expensive, right? But the way Chinese think is there's no meat, which is lower cost per unit. So actually all this food is pretty cheap. This is only 10 bucks. This was about $6 and this soup was $4. Eight treasure meatball. It ain't bad. Chinese Buddhist monks have always tried to make food taste and look like meat, but never have meat. Vegan cha shiu. Honestly, it did capture the barbecue vibe of Chashu quite well. Vegan ji ro. We are right next to actually a Popeye's chicken, which is also a cheap eat, but this is a much healthier option. Does that soup taste like it was cooked with seafood and pork? Honestly, to about a seven out of 10 level. This is a vegan hot pot, guys. They told me there's only two types of food in this world, vegan, and carnivorous, and they choose to side with the vegan. Mm. It's not the cheapest thing, it's about 30 bucks, guys. It feeds a whole family. We are looking at vegan abalone, vegan scallops, vegan cha shao. Aren't you guys, man? They were telling me how many different goos are in here because goo kind of indicates mushroom, right? So he said ji tui gu, which is like a yo, that's a chicken thigh mushroom, but it's vegan, obviously. He's like saying, man, but that we have all different things that are designed to taste like other things. This actually reminds me of a lot of Buddhist or Taoist vegan restaurants in Taiwan. Um, I know they have a really high percentage of Buddhists there, so I'm gonna go ahead and say this even tastes better for the soul and the body than it would if it had meat in it. You guys, 30 bucks, Jisoo Thai could feed four people. That's eight bucks a person. That's a Chinatown cheap eat. Obviously guys, here at Jisoo, they got a lot of cheap vegan options, but they also have ones that are 30, $40. For example, these gigantic mushroom caps that are cut to look like abalones. They even got vegan burgers on the menu, guys. They're like five, six dollars. Come to Jisoo, check it out, save a cow. Next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, we're here at the Little One over on East Broadway and they are bringing the high quality desserts. This is kind of like their take on the Hong Kong Swiss roll. This is a kabocha, AKA Japanese squash cake with cream cheese filling. So it's gonna be a little heavier than usual, but it is, it's, it smells delicious. I'm about to break it up. Wow, crumbles right like that. Mmm, really light cream cheese frosting. I think oftentimes cream cheese is very, uh, very heavy, like on the cupcakes, but this is delicious. Oh man, I'm telling you, they do such good work here. If you guys want a kind of like Japanese twist on a lot of Hong Kong desserts, you gotta come here to the little one. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, I got Marco joining me for Stop. this monumentous uh, occasion. This is a part Dominican owned, part Chinese owned uh, Dominican spot called El Cetillo. And you have an interesting story because El Cetillo means the site, but you thought it meant. I thought it meant C means yes and Tio means uncle. I thought it said the yes uncle. Right, hey, but but we gotta find out what it means. Uh, Marco, do you agree with me? I actually think there's a lot of visual similarities between um, Dominican food and Cantonese food, or at least mm. at lunchtime, like a waffle. Well, absolutely, like because you have the barbecue meats that are all outside, and it's a quick, uh, easy and go meal that you, you know prep quickly, and it's very similar. Hey, hup fun. It's just it's a rice box. Me, I gotta get the ribs. I have not seen those at um, any Dominican spot that I've personally been to, so I gotta get the ribs. Yo, I gotta go with the white rice. I want the vanilla. I gotta say it like I'm like I'm Latin, not yeah. like I'm a kid from Delaware. Oh man, they put gravy from one beef dish on the other beef ribs. Talk about flavor. Ooh. Ooh, wow, look at that. Uh, Marco, I know you were working on your pronunciation of the word for meal. Uh, like a you got you got a, like a slight B in there. A little B, a vanilla. You know how we say prosciutto? It's prosciutto. We say vanilla. Pronounce it with a B. Marco, uh, we were talking in there about the visual comparison between a lot of Dominican lunch foods and uh, Cantonese roast meats. Yeah, I, I noticed that they're very similar. Obviously, uh, you know, even with the food, you're eating pig. In, in, in the Cantonese spots, Dominican spots, it's all about the pig. Um, you know what was really interesting about El Cetillo is they actually have these ribs 
and then you can take sauce from like the other trays and put them on this entree, that entree. The sauces are not exclusive. Yo, this reminds me a lot of the shu yolk. Yeah, no, this looks a lot like the shu yolk from Wafong. That's crazy that it could look like an eight out of 10 match. No, seriously. Um, over here, I've got the ribs. Um, I never actually seen this at a Dominican Scott myself. I'm sure that it's always been there. Uh, let's go in. Let's do uh, it. El Satillo. All this for 20 bucks, guys. El Satillo, Dominican lunch. Come get it for dinner, too. Hey, you guys want some beans? Rice and beans. There it is. Wow. Yo, that's so Did good. Your plate? Yo, when I was back there, I said to them, yeah, when, when I was back, I told them, give me the greasiest, fattiest piece of pernil you have. And he did that. And let me tell you something. It's tremendous. No, that's literally. Solid. They took some of the fat oil runoff yeah. and used it as a sauce. I feel like that gives it so much more flavor. A lot of people don't like it because everybody's a, you know, a health freak. But, yo, I want the flavor in the dish. Well, yo, you know what's really interesting is that back in the day, this was considered Little Italy. But now it's considered Chinatown, but it's also really cool to see that there's different spots besides Asian food here, like Dominican. Straight up, I think all the kids should know for $10, and maybe 20 bucks, like five of you guys can eat. For $10, this is a steal. You get about four pounds of food for $10, you can't beat that. Hey, is the food any good? CTO, yes, uncle. All right, everybody, I'm here at Sun Tongue Fat Meats over here on Catherine Slip, man. This is a real gem. This costed $8.50 for the Sam Ping Fan, the three treasure meat. But you can look at it, man. The chashu is looking very, very, very flavorful, very deep, dark red, very saucy. It's got a little bit of the choy. You got the rice. Oh, man. Let's see if it's worth it. $8.50. Here at Sun Tongue Fat Meats. They got a meat shop on the left side. It's connected to the Siu Mei spot on the right side. Sun Tongue Fat Meats. Uh, I would definitely give it a seven out of 10. Very, very solid. The highlight here was the chashu. It was very juicy, very flavorful. They give you plenty of dup, AKA the juice. They pour that all on top. I would say the other meats were very decent. The duck was probably worth getting too. And they actually have other things like fried chicken and some other cooked foods. So, you know, they got a meat market right there. They got the roast meat market right there. You guys check it out, right? A real neighborhood spot on Catherine Street. Let's go. All right, you guys, next up on Chinatown Cheap Eats, you've got a Yomi's inside of a Happy Veggie, which is doing really inventive soy protein takes on like saute skewers. They actually have a ton of like chiu jiao Malay type dishes, Malaysian chiu jiao dishes on the menu. Man, I gotta try this. You guys, this is my very first time having vegan Malaysian food. And let me tell you this, it is good. All right, you guys, I know a lot of people watching are foodies. Let me know in the comment section below if you think that Yomi's yogurt, which is this Chinese modernized take on like, almost like Beijing Swan Nai, has legs, or is it just gonna stay in very Chinese communities? Vegetarian food will surprise you. I know I'm not a vegan, I'm not a vegetarian, but I have to be honest. After I eat vegan or vegetarian meals, I do honestly feel kind of light. At least I don't feel weighed down by any of the fat and oil and stuff. You have your vegan avocado spam masubi. Let's check it out. This is a vegan guat here. I honestly think it's about a 75 to 85% match for meat. So you guys, if you need to lose weight, if you need to feel lighter, maybe your body can no longer process meat, go vegan. Come to Happy Veggie. That's it for number 14. We've covered almost 200 restaurants, yes, but despite the economic setback that Chinatown New York and Chinatowns across America have taken the past two years, they're still bringing new spots. Listen, this place ain't going away anytime soon. It's just gonna change and evolve. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we out. Peace.